Just because you dated somebody for so long doesn't mean that now you know how to be married to them. One, prioritize your relationship. Unplug. That sounded like super dramatic. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Me. <laughs> that matters so much mm -hmm. it is not about our personal preference you pray together you figure out which church not based on preference your preferences will change get over it men just man up take your wife to church yeah appreciate that about you you're welcome thanks for loving me so well you're welcome it's like when you go to the gym and you sign up for the first time, you're like, what am I supposed to do here? It can be very overwhelming. Yeah. That can be marriage. Yeah. Just because you dated somebody for so long doesn't mean that now you know how to be married to them. Yeah. There needs to be intimacy exercises. And the question is, how do we actually do that? All right. So we're going to run through some intimacy exercises right now for people. Okay. This is super simple. Okay. okay. And we're going to run through these so you guys can try them. Okay. Okay. One, prioritize your relationship. That is an exercise. Again, that goes with one, date nights. Mm -hmm. People do not prioritize date nights. No. You used to date your spouse mm -hmm. to marry them, right. right? That's what led to. But now that you're married, you don't go on dates. Mm -hmm. And I know the excuses. I know the excuses. You don't have a babysitter. Well, what have we done so many times? Oh, yeah. We've put the kids to bed. We've had dinners and date nights in front of the fireplace. Yep. And you, you can get super creative. We've had movie nights and... Yeah. Yep. Put your kids to bed. 100%. <laughs> Put them to bed. Uh, the second thing, unplug. This yeah. this matters so much with prioritizing your relationship. Yeah. Getting off the phone, looking each other in the eyes. That's something I've noticed like we do at night, like after watching 100 reels and laughing together. It's funny. It is funny. Uh, but then putting the phone down and just like rolling over and gazing into each other's eyes. That sounded like super dramatic. It feels super dramatic we sometimes. We gaze into each other's eyes. Uh, Stop. No. Okay. So that's one way to do the intimacy exercise is prioritizing your relationship. Yeah. Another one is communicate openly. Mm -hmm. This is daily check-ins. So yeah. many people do not do daily check-ins. Mm -hmm. Um, touching. We've, I think we've done a podcast. This is like a really old podcast, but I remember like it's like 30 minutes a day that you talk to each other. Yep. And then it's like so many like basically a date night. Yep. You know, that you need to check in. Yep. I think it even might be like 10 minutes a day. And then it's like the date, the weekly uh, date night. Yep. And then it's like, you know, the the week, the weekend getaways and then the week vacations once a year. Yep. And so that all of those things matter. Yes. But your daily check-ins, it, it really isn't a lot. It's not. Uh, something else uh, for those exercises is active listening. Yeah. That takes a lot. Because but especially it goes back to being unplugged. Yes. It's not a, I'm on my phone and listening to you and you're like, uh-huh, mm -hmm. uh-huh, mm -hmm. uh-huh, mm -hmm. mocking <laughs> me. <laughs> like actively listening. Engaging in the conversation. Right. Responding. Yes. Including ideas. Yes. All of that. Uh, another thing, spiritual connection. Uh, I just actually text somebody this morning and just said, hey, I think something you need to start doing with your wife is praying with her every night together. Yeah. I was like, even with one minute prayer. Yeah. There's a connection there. Mm -hmm. That's 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 a workout. Yeah. You know, that's how you that's an exercise right there. That's how you're gonna get stronger together. Mm -hmm. The same thing, going to church together. Oh, absolutely. That matters so much. Mm -hmm. Listen, and if and if you're uh watching and listening and you go to different churches, one of you <laughs> you need to sacrifice it's to go to the sacrifice. same church. It is. This is not a church is not about preference. Right. It is Say not about that our, again. It is not about our personal preference. You pray together. You figure out which church, not based on preference, uh, personally, what is going to fill you. Yep. What it, what community do you want to be a part of? And give it your all. Yep. Your preferences will change. Get over it. Well, and this is the thing, too, because marriage is a sacrifice. Absolutely. When we're trying to find a church to go and worship Jesus, who sacrificed it all, mm -hmm. right? If we're trying to be more like him and he said, pick up your cross and follow me daily, some of you men, your cross is picking up that you're not going to go to the church that you want to go to. Instead, you're going to go with your wife or mm -hmm. vice versa, that it's the wife. Yeah. No, like, I'd say this, like men, just man up, take your wife to church. Yeah. Just take her to church. Yep. Don't don't wait for her to bring it up. Be committed. Be committed. Get up Sunday morning, get your kids up, get your wife up, go to church. Yeah. Because if you want your kids to be committed to God, they aren't going to be more committed than you are. Absolutely not. It's just like when, like, think about this, man. When you are a fan of whatever team, I'm a Bears fan, I'm a Notre Dame fan. Guess what my kids are fans of? Right. 
the same thing, but not as much as I am. Mm -hmm. But the more and the longer they're with me and around it, the more they will be that that fandom will become theirs. Yeah. It's the same thing with the relationship with Jesus. Absolutely. That right now they they go to our church because I mean they're they have fun and right. they're friends and exactly. Mm -hmm. But the more that they go, that they're no longer it's no longer my parents' God. It becomes their God. Jesus mm -hmm. becomes their God. Yeah. But I can't think like, oh, you know what? I'm just not going to go and they're going to fall in love with Jesus. No, come on, dude. Yeah. Grow up. Grow up, Peter Pan. <laughs> okay. Uh, next one. Physical affection. So let's talk about non-sexual touch. Yeah. Because this is like what I know you love. You love a good hug. Uh, you love holding hands. Mm -hmm. uh, the occasional cuddle uh, when we're laying in bed and you just want a spoon. Mm -hmm. And good old foot rub. Uh, definitely a good old foot rub. Rubbing your calves. Like. That, that's what you like, non-sexual. Mm -hmm. Now for me, it- All of that is sexual to you. 100%. 100% it is. <laughs> and for us guys, it is hard to touch our wife, our spouses, mm -hmm. and not want to go further because like your skin is so soft. Like it's, it's like, it's, it's like, oh, you know what? I just went to the store and bought some ice cream and now I'm just going to put it in the freezer. No, I want to eat that. You know what I mean? Like there's a reason that I went to the store. Mm -hmm. But- Going back to it, I'm trying not to be selfish, yeah. right? Because again, we have different sex drives. And that's the same thing with people listening and watching. Mm -hmm. You have different sex drives. So you need to get into that place of having non-sexual touch for your spouse, yep. physical affection. That's an mm -hmm. exercise you have to practice. That's what exercise is, right? Yeah. To get stronger in something, mm -hmm. you have to do it over and over and over repeatedly. Right. Repeatedly? Repetition. Keep going. Redundant. Yep. Yeah. Create a habit. Anyways, um, and then there is the sexual intimacy, which we've been talking about, yeah. but we're not going to jump into that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, emotional support. That's an exercise. Yeah. Actually being there for each other emotionally, expressing gratitude to each other. That's why we'll put a link below. Um, but that's why we have our sticky notes that in the morning, we just write what we love about each other and we put on our coffee. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just those little gratitudes. Mm -hmm. It's something so small. I love your hugs. Um, I love the way that you love Jesus. I yeah. love the way you take care of our kids. Um, I love kissing you. I, it's so easy. It's so easy. It's so easy. And just like, but so many times we don't express what we love about our spouse to our spouse. Yeah. We might tell someone else, oh, I love Chrissy. She's so good at listening. And she just hears me when I'm stressed out. She doesn't think like, oh man, he's about to lose it. Like she's there to comfort me. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, I need to let my wife know that. Yeah. That gratitude matters. That's an exercise. This is not just going to come normal. Going to the gym and bench pressing is not, does not feel normal, right? Mm -hmm. It's an it's exercise. Not comfortable. It's not comfortable. Right. I have to try it. Yeah. Um, be supportive. We have to be supported emotionally. And this is why, like we've had the conversation before. If there's ever a time that you feel like we need to go to our counselor, it's let's do it. I'm in. And vice versa. It's not like, no, 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 we'll get through this. I don't think it's a big deal. No, it's not that, you know, like, yeah. it's like, no, I, I want to support you emotionally. If, so if one you, of us feels it, we go. Come on. Yeah. That's it. Oh, I like number six. All right, you do it. Shared activities. Let's go. We, there's things that we, listen, my husband loves movies. Do I love movies? Yes, you do. No, I don't. <laughs> I literally will ask him, have we seen this movie? You're like, yeah, I remember we were in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. And did, I'm like, what? Uh -huh. I don't remember none of that. He knows where he saw every movie. Which is weird. It is weird. It is. It's like, why can't I remember other things that well? <laughs> Because you love it so much. I love it so much. And so there are things that I know that my husband loves. He will talk to me about the producers, the directors, and I'm like... All the important things that you should the, know. Yeah. I know you care about that stuff. And so I listen. I am a part of what he loves. And so, but then we actually we actually have activities that we love to do together. We went hiking the other day. Yep. We almost died. Oh my gosh. But we were going to die together. We were. Um, I told her, I was like, if I pass out, just put me under a tree. She's like, there are no trees. There's you... not, there's no shade. We went at noon. That was the dumbest idea. Yeah, we were sweating. It was nasty. <laughs> but having hobbies together, we like to exercise together. Yeah, we like, go to the we, gym together. We go to the gym together. Um, we, like we go to hiking eat. together. We go biking together. We yeah. like going and trying different restaurants together. Yeah, and so find something that you like together. And even if your spouse likes something like the movies, just... Maybe you'll like it too. Yeah. Or even know. like thinking, I don't remember since us dating a time where you don't sacrifice and watch like Notre Dame football with me, you know? And it's like, it's not like it's like you love it, you know? Like, well, you're into it. You'll watch and stuff. But it's like, 
you have other stuff you could be doing, you know, yeah. but it's like, but again, you've, you just sacrifice like, no, my husband likes this. I'm going to do this with him. Mm -hmm. And so again, I appreciate that about you. You're welcome. Thanks for loving me so well. You're welcome. Number um, seven. Okay. Uh, learn each other's love language. Guys, if you don't know your spouse's love language, you're going to struggle loving your spouse. Yeah, that's probably why you're super frustrated. Yep. I'm doing all this stuff for her. Why Why is she still mad and angry? It's because you're loving her the wrong way. And that sounds weird. Right. But we all have, uh, probably whatever you're naturally giving is what your love language is. And so if you're naturally like helping her, you probably like help as the acts of service as your love language and so um i don't even remember the the author of that book super easy book you can take the quiz five love languages and you can just figure it out i'm telling you it's a game changer because when you put all of your effort into that one thing it's gonna make a huge difference and instead of trying to like do all of this stuff you're gonna really put your investment where where it belongs. Yeah. What are the five love languages? The five love languages are physical touch, words of affirmation, quality time, gifts, and acts of service. Gary Chapman. Dr. Gary, Gary Chapman. Yeah, that was it. And so you could read the whole book. It's really great. You could take the test and just read part of the book. But um, it's so helpful. For sure it is. You know, it's not like it's a... I think there's actually a free test you can take online. Probably. To actually know what your love language is and your spouse's. Um, and then something else that we always talk to people about, again, an exercise to put in place is a marriage checkup. Yeah, that's like, really good. Hey, like, how am I doing actually meeting your need for your love language? Mm -hmm. You know, how's your love tank? You know, like, are, do you feel like I'm giving you words of affirmation? Yeah. Um, okay, the next one. Healthy conflict. Mm. Healthy communication. And we've done a whole uh, sermon series on this, but emotionally healthy relationships. And that most people, when, when there's an offense, there's bitterness, something comes up, they brush it under the rug. And the yeah. problem is that rug gets piled up and then somebody trips up and somebody blows up. Yeah. Instead of saying, hey, what you said, I know you didn't mean to hurt me. I know you weren't trying to offend me. I know you weren't trying to, but the way that I heard it, mm -hmm. it made me feel, Yeah, you know, and just having that open conversation. Yeah. So then you can say, man, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to make you feel like that. Like, I love you. Right. Like, and that's the thing too. We tell people this all the time. When you have the conversation with your spouse, you have to remember when it's conflict. Okay. If I'm going in to have a conversation with Chrissy, if you're going in to have a conversation with me, the mindset is I love her and she loves me. I want the best for her and she wants the best for me. Mm -hmm. When I have that mindset, I'm not trying to come and attack you. Yeah. And I believe that you're not trying to come and attack me mm -hmm. because we said earlier two become one. Yeah. And if we're trying to attack each other, I'm attacking myself. Yeah. Well, we also have our, our free PDF too about the three T's of communication. Yeah. It's super important. It's super easy, but it's the three T's. So go get your free PDF and, and, Read through that. Yeah, I'm going to put that link in the bio. So you can definitely get that too. And also, if this stuff is helping you, give a thumbs up right now. Go ahead and hit that like button. Yeah. Um, oh. And then uh, conflict re resolution forgiveness, man. We, we, we just RSVP to a wedding the other day and it was like, what's like um, some advice you want to give to the couple? And my, like literally the first thing I thought of was like forgive fast. Yes. Like don't, don't be so easily offended. You know, I think that's a life motto, but specifically in your marriage, yes. like you're both trying to figure it out. You're not being intentional about certain things. Forgive fast, talk about it and, and move forward. Well, one of the things that even I was uh, praying about thinking about today was that, that like to, to, to forgive fast, sometimes we need to fast. Yeah. Like sometimes I need to think when I fast, I'm saying this isn't about me. Again, I'm dying to myself. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes people are holding on to such bitterness and anger towards their spouse because they're making it about them. Right. Instead of saying, no, no, what Jesus did for me on the cross, when I think of communion, when I think of the body that was broken, the blood that was shed, and he forgave me, my, my spouse hasn't done worse to me than I've done to Jesus. Right. Surely I can forgive them. <laughs> right. And sometimes it is. You, you Again, we have to bring in that spiritual element of I'm going to fast for my spouse. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to fast for myself to forgive my spouse, you know. Right. And it's not ignoring. It's having healthy conversations. Right. It's talking through things. It's not like you said, pushing things under the rug. That's not what forgiveness is. And so it takes a lot of work. But I tell you what, you put in the work on the front end, it will get easier. Yep. 
You know what I mean? Like we had some hard stuff going on in the beginning of our marriage, but I feel like we forgive each other really fast now. Definitely. I'm able to just be blunt with you and be like, Hey, like you said this and I didn't like it. Right. And we just talk it through and you know, you explain, I didn't mean it. That's not what I meant. Yep. You, you know, and it's really just a basic misunderstanding. Yeah. So those are exercises that you can put in place mm-hmm. to grow that intimacy in your marriage. Okay. So, so far we have dove into what's okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, why do we feel uncomfortable trying new things, having those conversations? Uh, how do we talk about those new things? What isn't okay? Now, here's something else. And then we just talked about like exercise to put in place to be more intimate. Yeah. Here's another thing that I found. Social, psycho, uh, psychological, and personality science published this. They indicated that couples who have sex at least once a week or more are likely to report higher levels of happiness, marital satisfaction compared to those who have sex less frequently. Mm -hmm. Now, this goes back to what we talked about last week, and that's about actually scheduling sex. And we actually talked about four things that every Christian couple should know to have a great love life. So I'm going to put that link right here. You can click it right here to make sure that you go and you can work on that today. And it starts with this scheduling it, but there's three other things you're going to want to make sure you hit that button now to see it and we'll see you on the next video.